Hello, my name is Dr. Bukya Tejasvi and I'm a third year radiology resident from TNMC and be well Nair Hospital. And the topic for my paper is imaging of extra pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. So introduction is the gastroenteropancreatic neuroendocrine tumors are a heterogeneous group of neoplasms that arise from cells of the diffuse neuroendocrine system. And these are count for about 1.5 of all GI and pancreatic neoplasms. And coming to the GI tribe, the ileum is the most common site and the colon is the least common site. And it is can, can produce metabolically active hormones, amines and clinical manifestation of these lesions can be due to their hypersecretions. The more non-functioning tumors frequently manifest as locally advanced disease like bowel obstruction, mass effect or with metastasis especially to the liver. The aim of my study is to evaluate extra pancreatic GI uh, neuroendocrine tumors using various imaging techniques. And I have taken three cases and we have performed various modalities on these patients, especially the ultrasonography, contrast enhanced ultrasonography, CT, MRI, and also the barium studies. And further, all these cases were subjected to EUS guided biopsy and histopathological correlation was done for confirmation of the diagnosis. And my first case is about a 15-year-old female who is not a known case of any comorbidities, came with complaints of epigastric region pain since 2 months, intermittent vomiting episodes since 20 days, LOS discoloration of sclera since 15 days and associated with on and off low-grade intermittent fever and generalized weakness. On general examination, there was icterus and pallor. The vitals were stable. The systemic examination was normal. The blood investigations showed raised liver enzymes and also raised total and direct bilirubin. And first, uh, primarily ultrasound was done and it has, uh, and it has revealed a uh, a well-defined lesion in the D2 segment of the duodenum with, uh, with mild internal vascularity. And here we can see it caused upstream dilatation of the CBD and also central and peripheral IHBRD. And medially to this, le uh, medially to this lesion, there were two lymph nodal masses adjacent to the D2 segment and it is inferior to the head of pancreas. And further, we have done a contrast in an ultrasonography. And here we can say this is the lesion and to the and to the right and to the left is the Mets and uh, and uh, further left is the iota. And time intensity curve was generated with the help of automated software and in which we can see earlier art, early arterial enhancement with delayed washout and this follows the enhancement pattern similar to the abdominal iota. And here we can see on the left on the right side early arterial enhancement and early washout compared to the abdominal iota. And considering these features, a possible diagnosis of neuroendocrine tumor was made. And further, MRI was done for confirmation of the diagnosis and also for the better delineation of the biliary tract. Here we can see single shot MRCP reveals a well-defined mass in the ampule of the waiter, which caused upstream dilatation of CBD and also mild central and peripheral IHBRT. And this mass on T1, it appears hyper intense. And this mass also shows Different restriction pattern on DWI ADC. And also, these lymph nodes show this. And it has homogeneous mild post contrast enhancement. And following this MRI, ERCP with standing was performed and scope was not able to pass beyond B2. Further, we have done barium studies to look for the integrity and involvement of the D3 segment. Here, as we can see, there is a well-defined radio opacity bulging into the D2 segment of the duodenum, which causes mild narrowing. But however, the barium is seen to pass distally. And next, a ga gallium dota pet was also done, which revealed areas of high SU in the ampullary region and also in the adjacent lymph nodes. And further, we have, we have done a us guided biopsy, which has confirmed the diagnosis of the neuroendocrine tumor. And here in this patient, the KI67 KI was about 4 to 5 uh, percent, which has which reveals that this is a moderately differentiated NET. And next, after this, after the diagnosis of NET was made, the patient was given PRRT, namely peptide receptor radionuclear therapy. And the patient responded well to this treatment. And also on the further scans and the follow-up scans, we have seen there is a reduction in the clinical symptoms and also reduction in the size of the lesion and as well as the uh, lymph nodes. And my next case would be of a 61-year female who, who came with a complaint of pain in abdomen since one year Pain was localized to epigastric region, intermittent aching, and progressed gradually. It was associated with multiple episodes of vomiting. And the patient was uh, subjected to CECT. And here we can see a well-defined mass seen to be arising from the second part of duodenum with suprapancreatic extension and ill-defined pat planes with the head of the pancreas. 
and the mass shows intense force contrast enhancement. And the same thing is shown over here too. And there are few, uh, like two sub-centimetric sized hypodense, hypo-enhancing lesions seen in the segment eight of the liver, and we suspected them to be hepatic metastasis. And considering these features, we have given a diagnosis of neoplastic etiology, likely NET more than adenocarcinoma. And then US get a biopsy was done and further confirmed and confirmed that this is an NET. And my third case would be of a 71-year-old female who presented with a complaints of pain in abdomen, chronic diarrhea, blood in stools and weight loss since 10 months. And on CECT, we can see an ill-defined soft tissue density mass lesion seen in the right parapoly gutter on lateral aspect to the distal ascending colon, which is seen to displace the colon medially. And we also can see it is, it is seen to be supplied by dilated tortuous middle colic artery and, drain, and drained by middle colic vein. And this mass shows homogeneous post contrast enhancement. And this is a sagittal image showing thrombosis of the intratumoral draining vein. And in the coronal images, we can see multiple dilated collaterals in the peripancreatic region near the head of the pancreas and medial to the lesion. Considering all these features, we have given a possible diagnosis of neuroendocrine tumor. And later, we have done a EUS grade biopsies in which the in which this confirmed NET. And on, on the high power image, there, uh, there was nuclear pleomorphism with xylbalin appearance. And next, we have also seen a lumen occluding fibrin thromba in an intratumoral vein. And my conclusion would be as follows. In the, so, in the first case, which is an ampullary NET, apart from the CT and MRI, the time intensity curves which were derived on CUS, it aided us more in the diagnosis of the NET. And the CUS can also be uh, furtherly used for in the follow-up of these patients, like especially in this post-radiation therapy. So, the changes in the time intensity curves can be compared and thus we can see the treatment or uh, response to the treatment. And thus, the patients will be, uh, will be excluded from this unnecessary radiation by, via CT or PET. And in my next case, on the second, that is second case from that is NET from D2 segment. Apart from the enhancement characteristics, the suprapancreatic extension and loss of fat planes of the pancreas, and also the hepatic metastasis indicated the aggressiveness of the tumor. And and coming to the next one, colon is a very uncommon site for NET. However, in in my case third and in case three, that is ascending colon NET. The CT enhancement pattern and supply with the adjacent dilated tortuous middle colic artery aided in the diagnosis of NET. NETs are usually are known to be associated with major vessel thrombosis. But however, in my third case, which is ascending colon NET, intratumoral vein thrombosis is seen both on H uh, CT and also HP images. So in all these cases, we have done HP confirmation along uh, using some specific stains for NET, namely synaptophysin and chromogramin. So overall, neuroendocrine tumors are usually small in size, solid and hypovascular. If they're larger in size, that is, uh, that we take the criteria as more than 2 centimeters, they're often heterogeneous and could have areas of necrosis and occasionally could be solid cystic or completely cystic. On CT and MRI, they appear hyper-enhancing in arterial phase. So MR techniques such as DWA and ADC, ADC mapping now serve as a complementary role to other MRI sequences, particularly for localizing non-hypervascular tumors. So there is a study done by Wong Wai, in 2011, and that showed an inverse correlation between tumor KI67 labeling index on pathology and ADC values. And thus, this supported the role of DWI in helping, helping predict tumor biology. There's also significant association between CUS, KI67, and grade of the tumor. So we can see low-grade tumors are homogeneously hypervascular in CUS, whereas high-grade tumors are inhomogeneous. Neuroendocrine tumors are associated with tumor thrombosis of vessels in 5% of cases, majorly involving major veins like IVC, splenic vein, and portal vein. These are my references. Thank you.